I'm excited to share with you one of our newest patterns, and this is the halter top version of the Betty dress. You can find this top edition that can be used for the original Betty dress. You can find it linked in our shop below. And this floral linen is also linked below. It's from a shop on Etsy and it is absolutely beautiful in person. You're going to begin by preparing your fabric, ironing it, washing it, drying it, and getting it all ready to lay out for your pattern. Make sure you cut out your pattern pieces according to the instructions and how it is written on your pattern. You're going to make sure you mark the notches and the darts on the pattern piece. You can use a tailor's loop if you're familiar with that, and if not, I just like to use a water-soluble pen and a sharp pen to mark the points of the dart and the ends of it. And then I use some notches to make sure that they're in the right position. And then using a straight edge, you will connect the dart point to the ends with a water soluble pen or chalk. Right sides together match the notches on the end and the pointed dart and create a crease through the center onto the tip of your dart. Sew this closed from the notches to the tip. To do this, you'll want to start with a smaller stitch length like 1.8 and towards the end, decrease the stitch length to as small as it will go. This will keep the stitches tight without having to do a back stitch and make that kind of visible on the outside of your garment. Make a knot with the thread to secure and repeat this for the next start. Now take your halter back piece and sure it long ways. To do this, you're going to use elastic thread and a clean empty bobbin. By hand, you're going to wind the bobbin and you're going to make sure that you are not pulling on the thread and stretching out this elastic. You want it to be just going around the bobbin naturally and this is going to make sure it's going to go through the machine in a natural way. Now insert your bobbin into your machine and again you're going to want to just be careful to not pull the elastic too tight and you're going to thread the top thread with the elastic thread on the bobbin. You'll want to pull the wheel towards yourself and this will naturally connect the threads together and you can pull the elastic thread through the top of the machine. Now you're going to change the stitch length and the tension length of your machine 
And I just made this a little bit um, wider. You can see my preferences here. And this is going to make sure that the threads can bunch up and do what they need to do to create this elastic feeling to the fabric. Next, take your fabric and starting at the top a quarter of an inch from the edge, you're going to draw a line all the way across with a water soluble pin or chalk and continue doing this half an inch down the remaining back bodice piece. Grab your back bodice facing and right sides together, stitch along the top of your back bodice piece and finish the edge of this facing so that it's clean once you are finished sewing everything together. Shirring fabric can take a lot of practice and every fabric, every machine is different. So I recommend testing out different tensions and stitch lengths on extra scrap fabric before committing to the back bodice piece. Now you're going to begin at the line that you drew and do a back stitch and just stitch along the lines and you're going to do this to the end of the back bodice piece. When you get to the end, you're going to turn your fabric and lift up your needle and skip to the next line. Then put your needle back down and pivot your fabric and continue sewing down each line back and forth until you reach the end of the bodice piece. You might need to refill your bobbin if you've run out between this time. Once you are finished, you'll see some stretch to the fabric, but you might need some extra help, and that's where an iron comes in place. Turn your iron on its highest setting for steam, and you'll want to add some steam to the fabric, and this is going to, it's going to bunch up the fabric and put that elastic into motion and kind of create that stretch effect that you're looking for. Now with the right sides together, sew your halter front and halter back side seams together at half an inch. Finish with the finishing of your choice, which could be a zigzag stitch, a serge on the side seams, or even using pinking shears. And press this towards the back of the garment. Now grab your front and back facings, right sides together, sew the side seams at half an inch. Take your straps and press the long sides in towards the wrong side of the fabric at a quarter of an inch. Press your fabric in half long ways and sew along the folded edge to close and finish your strap. Thank you. 
Now grab your front facing and finish the outer edge with the finish of your choice. The back facing is already connected to the back bodice panel. So you're going to take your front facing and line it up right sides facing together with the front bodice piece. Pin the side seams of the facing together and go all the way around the facing and the bodice piece connecting these together. Now take your straps and insert them into the corners of the halter top and line them up to the back of the bodice piece where the notches are. You may need to stretch the shirred fabric of the back to make sure that the straps are in the correct place. Now sew around the entire facing and bodice piece, sewing them together at a quarter of an inch. Then when you're finished, turn the facing into the inside of the garment to keep the facing in place and make sure it doesn't move around. You can sew the facing to the bodice along the side seams and you can also finish with a top stitch if you want to give it an extra clean look. Now continue the remaining steps with the Betty dress for the top tier and the bottom tier and hemming this and you will have a beautiful finished dress. You can see these instructions by clicking the video now. <music>